gotta be good. If I get thrown out, I'll go live with my mom. Mama, get off the money! Welcome yeah. to the Real Estate and Chill Podcast, the newest and coolest podcast. So tune in. Two experts discussing the real estate market. Loan Officer James Chudley and Associate Real Estate Broker Kevin Iglesias. Beware, this is not another boring podcast. This right here is the shit you need to hear, respectfully. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome back to the newest episode of the Real Estate and Chill Podcast. I'm your host, James Shaddy from United Mortgage, here with... Kevin Iglesias, Associate Broker. Today in the building, you see the bottles, you see the boxing gloves. It's a special event, a special boxing match. All right, who do we got in the building all right, so coming in from Lindenhurst, he does business all around Long Island. He Ooh. is known as being the sexy Latino realtor in this place. We have Jose Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and in the left corner, we have a man, a Mexican warrior, all the way from... Westchester County. <laughs> Standing six foot two, weighing nothing but iron muscle. Gio Flores. <laughs> Sizing each other up. Stand them up. <laughs> well, pleasure to have you guys here, man. Please Thank you for having us. introduce Thank you yourselves. <laughs> Okay, my name is Jose Padro, um, residential realtor for Signature Premier Properties. Uh, thank you for having me, guys. I appreciate it. Awesome. Yeah, thanks for having us, guys. Um, Gio Flores from Realty Connect. Uh, you know, kind of raised in Westchester, moved to Long Island about seven years ago. So kind of do a work all around, man. I'm excited. I'm well, excited to be here. Congrats. And salud! Salud, salud. salud. Yes. Awesome, so, man. Burning topic. Number one, interest rates are at all time lows. Can't say that anymore. <laughs> but I heard you say, uh, so Gio, I just heard you say uh, Realty Connect. I think I knew you from somewhere else before. Yeah, so before Realty Connect, I was at uh, EXP. So it was, uh, so I got, I've been in the business for about, I think it's like seven months now. Sort of at EXP. Uh, great, great brokerage firm, um, all good things. But I was looking for something more. Um, you know, I think uh, when I started with EXP, there was, friend of mine who got me into XP was like, hey, follow this guy. It's Kevin. Shout, shout out to James because he was here. <laughs> <laughs> James, Why yeah, do you keep James, calling James, me James? Follow this guy. Um, and I related to Kevin a lot because... It's actually, Jimmy Beach House. Uh, they didn't pass my test the first time or the, or the second time. I'm just not a test person. So James was like, hey, follow this guy. And I saw Kevin and he has this beautiful house. He's showing it and talked about he didn't pass the test as well. And I was like, well, if this guy can do it, I can do it. Um, but he was really, it was inspiring. So I think uh, for me, it was something I really wanted to do. And I was like, I've gotten this far. Like, I just can't give up because real estate has always been a passion of mine. I'm like, I'm just one year line. Like, I have to do it. And I think it's just been like, I always been just, just, just do it. Yeah. What about, what about you, Jose? Did you pass first time? Oh, yeah. I oh, come on. Listen, <laughs> I passed first time too. Yo. We, and I'm not, nah, I'm not the, like, we, like, like we're going to have to jump them. Great <laughs> test <laughs> taker, but it was one of those things that it, it, like, it tuned me in. I went to, like, the, the classroom environment in the city. So, and the, the professor was really good, but at the same time, very discouraging or scaring you because I think there was, like, over 100 people in the classroom, and he goes, 90 of you are going to quit within the first year. Yeah, <laughs> so, yo, I heard the same thing. I am like, I wanted to quit right there and then. I'm like, thanks for the motivation, right, sir. And then he goes, out of this 10, he goes, 70 of you guys are going to quit in the second year. And he goes, the three are only going to make this a career. So everybody's literally looking at each other, left, right, and it's like the <laughs> Hunger Games. Like, who's gonna survive? <laughs> I'm gonna head out so now. It's like, oh man. So, nah. But he was very engaging, and he he got us basically prepared for the test, and we passed. You know what's the most intimidating thing about the school, though? They were like, if you don't pass the school test, you don't take the state test, then you gotta take the school all over again. <laughs> and then it's like, yo, I don't want to fail in front of everybody else because <laughs> it's like a line waiting. Yeah. <laughs> what are you handing in your score? And I was seeing. People feel I was like, oh man, I hope I pass. I hope I pass. <laughs> but the school test I passed. All right. So cheers to that. Cheers yeah, to that. I think everybody passes school tests. But if you didn't, it's okay. Yeah. There's still hope. I think that like 
I mean, I'm not going to speak for everybody, but uh, I think a large percentage of people who are in real estate may not be like the best like test takers on paper. Yeah. So it's a very natural thing. I mean, I'm not, but you know, I passed first time. I mean, I just studied like a good amount like the week before and that's all it really takes like for me. But everyone's different because I know people who took the loan officer who are successful loan officers now who took like three or four tries to pass yeah. it. So it doesn't – the test doesn't really – I mean, I'm not going to say that we don't use the <laughs> test for what we do, but like we do, but it's not everything. Like you don't get that experience being on the ground like by exactly. studying in a book. Like you get that from actual experience. Keep it real though. Like how much of the stuff that we learn in school do we use oh, now? Like no, nothing, no, nothing. Absolutely nothing. nothing. I can't smart. even think of one time that easement has been a part of my deal <laughs> whatsoever <laughs> at all. I'm just like, yo, this is like – I don't know. It's yeah, crazy. I can't speak on this matter. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I think school is important for some like basic things, but I think there's some other things that uh, take it to play when you go into the real world, where like you have to shoot smart. It's like I'm not a textbook person, that's why I was like not really good at the test. I'm like I can't take the test, but I know I can show a house. I know I can talk to people, and I feel like a lot of people who can do really well on tests can't talk to people as much. They get like shy, and I'm like I can do that part. So for me, it's about like I said, I knew. I was right there. I want to take it. I want to do real estate. And uh, it was interesting when you, you talk about the stats, right? How many people drop out the first year, the second yeah. year. And I think uh, when we were talking earlier, I think it's because they don't, they're not on the right team. They don't have the right mentors. I think right there's guidance. so many that go right into guidance. play yeah. to it. Yeah. Because uh, sure, it's if it was easy, everyone would do it. But we know that um, it's not easy. It's, it's not HGTV. It's, it's TV. No, exactly. it's, it's not. definitely not easy. It's one of those things that you're always challenged every day. Every, Every deal is different. Yeah. <laughs> Mentally, like we were just talking about that. As yeah. far as the worst deal, like just every day you're being challenged then and sometimes that's why it's important to have a good support system because uh yeah, if you're in this by yourself, oh man, you're gonna crash and burn. Really you gotta have quick. a good support staff. Yeah. I think it's like I mean, we're in like the network we're in like a community where networking is so important. So you gotta make sure you have the right lenders, the right attorneys, the right mm -hmm. insurance brokers, like everything. So it's a very like hand in hand game where yeah. you need to collaborate on some or collaborate with other realtors because you need to be on you're gonna be on other sides of the table. So let's talk about that though. Having the right in house team matters. Like when you put a deal together for a buyer, you know, having the inspector that you know, having the the attorney that you know. Like I've I've done deals where attorneys like killing the deal yeah yeah, yeah yeah it's and like you know, that's, that, that's like literally like my my buyer's consultation even my uh, uh my listing presentation that's one of the first things i talk about and i share the contacts of the people that genuinely would do the right thing for my clients and i have them make that phone call as soon as i'm done with them because i want them to already start that dialogue and I want them to basically have that information already set. It's like, all right, this is my attorney that's going to represent me throughout the transaction. Like at the very beginning, because you want your ducks in a row, especially in this competitive market, right? So, I mean, I've gotten deals uh, and because of the attorney we're using or the home inspector we're using. And Same that here. makes a huge, a huge advantage to you as you're presenting an offer because you find that commonality with, that listing agent or the buyer's agent or whatever the case may be. And you know, it's going to be a smooth transaction. Yeah. Uh, I've had, especially attorneys, like there's one <laughs> attorney that every time I use them, they're like, Oh, you know him? And I'm like, yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, you want him to, and sometimes like even making that phone call, cause you know, certain attorneys don't get on the phone and this particular attorney would get on the phone. Oh, I'll call him. Yeah. All right. Let's make this deal work. Yeah. I, I've had an attorney with like 10 offers on one table on the table. Right. The attorney's like, Oh yeah. Can I, can I fax it to you? Like, yo, just email it. What are you doing? <laughs> like the time is of the S. Yeah. We got to sign now. <laughs> like, it's crazy. It's crazy the stuff that we deal with that people don't see. Yeah. But Behind that's why the they, yeah, yeah. they think that our job, our career is so easy. No, it's definitely not easy. I, I will tell you, it's definitely not easy. And and touching base as far as my personal experience, uh, a lot of people don't know. Like, I've been in the business, I would say, nine years, like, right now in total. But before, uh, I was I was a realtor for, like, about a year prior to that and i i quit basically because i told you guys like i had a full-time job it was just hard and then like family can definitely uh put a, a yo you get to get a real job <laughs> get a real job and, and and then you start seeing like your friends and family um buying houses through somebody else and you're just like oh maybe i'm not cut out for this it, and it, then it hurts oh that's the worst feeling oh that's the Dang. worst feeling and people that you think like 
ah, oh, they'll use me regardless. Like, we're blood. No, no, you know? that's the opposite. Oh, yeah. absolutely. And I think you're right. It was funny because I, because when I got into sales after college, you know, I, I love sales because I work in restaurant business. And I love fact, first of all, spoke to a lot of people. You never who you, would, you never know who would walk through that door and you would serve. Uh, the harder you worked, the more money you made. But the better service you gave, right? You made more money. Um, so I wanted to do something like that after college. And I actually went to school to become a teacher. Really? Yeah. So I, I taught for like a year. And then I was like, I saw the money. And I was like, yeah, this is not for me. Like where I want to be in life, I can't get there in this route. So to me, it was like, what can I do? That can make a lot of money, and it's like it's uncapped, which is sales. But yet again, I think I think it's a maybe it might be a Latino culture thing where they're like sales is not a job. Yeah, you can become a doctor. Uh, yo, that's funny. Oh, I yeah. think so. So they were like, don't do sales. I'm like, you know what? I, I have to do it because I had a, I had a I had kids. So I'm like, I got I got I got to put food on the table. I got diapers yeah. aren't cheap. They they've never worked. You're gonna survive off sales. Yeah. You're gonna survive off yeah. commission yeah. checks. So, so I like. I did it, you know, I did what any kid would do and just said, don't worry, don't worry, guys, I got this. And so I started doing sales and, you know, within a few years, I was doing pretty well in six figures. And it's funny because now at family parties, um, talking to my parents, they'd be like, yeah, you made a good choice. Yeah. <laughs> 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 at the beginning, like, it was not a good choice. <laughs> I was like, you guys are against it. But they were like, no, no, we're proud of you. I'm like, okay. Uh, that pillow talk was definitely different. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> His mom and dad be like, I don't know what to do with him. <laughs> He don't listen to me. <laughs> Yo, but I think that goes with the point. Like, salesmen do get a bad rep. Like, they really do. Because, like, you you hear of, like, the, the car salesman and then, like, you know, people have, like, bad things throw against them. Like, realtors, like, more. Because we're salesmen at the end of the day. There are some people who give us a bad name yeah. for sure. But, you know, I mean, a lot of what I do isn't really sales, though. It's like I'm, I'm more focused on, like, the communication, working with them. It's, like, more of, like, a concierge yeah. service. Yeah. Than, than a sales service for me, but so you were a teacher. What like how old were the kids you were teaching? Uh, so I taught like middle school. So it was oh, like the, I, I like the the seven eighth seven or eighth grade because it was they were still young. They weren't as you know rebels when you got to the high school. And um, I loved it. It was great. But like I said, I think for me personally, uh, financial wise, where I wanted to be, I, I couldn't. I loved. First of all, I love teachers. I don't think they get paid enough. Uh, but just for I me agree. personally, like yeah. I, I want to be here X Y Z and do things X Y Z, and then it just wasn't a route for me. And then sales, like I said, uh, the harder you worked, the more money you made, um, and it was not easy. So I think it was just you know, the harder you worked, the easier I got it. You, you get paid for the for the work you put in, which yeah. is the best feeling ever. What about you? Like before real estate, you were. So before real estate, I was a salesperson. I would say at Best Buy. Sixth Avenue Electronics, I was a general manager. I used to sell like TV, surround sound, home automation. And then I transitioned over to Marshalls. Um, I was there as a store manager for about 12 years. Wow. And I just quit in October last yeah. year. Nice. So, um, Cheers to that. Yeah, Cheers to that. <laughs> Entrepreneurship. <laughs> no benefits. No security. Yeah, oh, man. Listen, that's Welcome. why I lost like 29 pounds. <laughs> so, it's because of that. The no security. But honestly, I wouldn't want it any other way. It's definitely um, entrepreneurship is, I mean, it, at the end of the day, I was complaining about working 50, 60 hours at Marshall's, but I'm working more now. Like no shuttle switch right now. So it's like, but you know what? I like I, I love it. I love the grind. I love the people. Like even just just making an impact as far as families' lives. Like being part of that. It's just crazy. It's an amazing feeling. Yeah, like the the money's good, but that feeling that the family like hugs you and cries and exactly. they invite you yeah, to the party. Yeah, yeah, that's the best the party. part. The barbecues the barbecue. <laughs> A summer, I look forward to it every year. Barbecues all over the place, but honestly, it, it's just very rewarding. It is. Let's tackle one myth, though, because when I got into the business, I thought, yeah, I'm going to make my own hours. I'm going to be chilling. <laughs> you work on other people's time, basically, yeah. so I, you, you can't, no. especially when you're new. You got to, like, take every lead. Yeah. Like, I've, I've done deals with clients. I'm like, yeah, I don't want to work for this person, <laughs> but I had to. Like, I had to get, you know, I had to make money. I had to get paid. It's tough in the beginning. What would be some of your advice to people that, like, are getting started or looking to get started? 
So, I mean, my advice, I would, I would say you got to you gotta speak to everybody, right? And, and I always speak to my experience. Like, I just remember one, one client that I've met, and it was buying a pair of Jordans, legitimately. I went to Full Locker, and these new Jordans dropped. I should be old. <laughs> I shouldn't be rocking Jordans. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember going to this Full Locker right in Walt Whitman Mall, and I, I got the new note. And that's how the conversation started. So I met the the salesperson. The salesperson goes, oh, I like your phone. But me, I was so, like, enthusiastic with the sneaker. Lucky I have my wife there. And my wife goes, oh, yeah, it's for his real estate business. And he goes, oh, realtor. And it still didn't dawn on me. I'm still looking at this. I'm like, this is so nice. I'm like, they're very good. I'm, like, thinking about playing basketball. And then my wife is, like, hitting me. She's like, Hey, listen, this is, so it so happened to be that, and this happened like about, uh, at the beginning of my career, like, um, eight years ago. And that conversation that I started with that kid and his name is Harry, Harry Bashian. And they, they believed in me so much. That was my biggest listing, a million plus in, in the, um, a private community. And they legitimately gave me like a couple of deals already. And that green port house that I just pretty much like, uh, sold on the water is their investment property. Oh, so wow. all nice. because of that one conversation and just speaking in, I should thank my wife. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She gave me the <laughs> alley. Who oh, <laughs> me all the time? She wants a, a, a bag right now. So I'm like, Oh my God. She brings Shout out to that. She brings it out. So it's already spent before I even sell the house. It's spent. But just for a new agent is just talk to everybody, that person next to you in the coffee line, that person that's doing your nails. It's just you don't know who you're going to bump into that's going to need your 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 service. I think that's the, the best. And, it, and yeah. it's 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 true because you never know who has properties to sell to get rid of. Like some people think that, you know, you have to look what you have. And I mean, like you have to look rich. Yeah. I deal with guys that are so humble that you would never think that they own properties like in oh, Queens yeah. and Brooklyn for three million plus and have like six, seven, eight properties. They're yeah. just like driving like a 1990s old like yeah. Honda Civic and just like, you know, they, you can't tell whatsoever. No. And that's the beauty about real estate. It's like, you, you just never know. Yeah. I just never know. Even in the restaurant business, uh, I remember this one guy came in jeans, flip flops, t shirt, we could put four people, like just average. And the bill came and gave him the bill, and he took his credit card out. It was the first time I held a black card, like the Amex Ooh, card. And I was yeah. like, you would have never known. This guy is literally in a t shirt, jeans, and flip flops in a, in a fancy restaurant, but this guy has a black card. And I think it's, again, I think it's, um, you never know who you might meet or have a conversation with. I think the important thing, when you start off as listening more than speaking, I think in the beginning, because there's so many emotionals from the other side and you can't like, I would say don't mirror the other side, just listen because it's an emotional thing. Either they're selling or they're buying. And so for me, it's always been just, you know, why do they want to buy? Why do they want to sell? And just listen. And then just, um, throughout the process, you're like, Hey, you know, when things get kind of hard, like, Hey, remember why we're doing this? And I think it's like, brings people back at ease like you're selling it because you want to go to florida right because you want to enjoy the people like, you're sick of the snowstorm you stick yeah. you're sick of all this yeah. stuff and so people are like yeah yeah you're right so kind of like brings people down so like listen acknowledge and just really help them out at the end of the day providing value is the number one thing too yeah i think that's where a lot of agents fail is yeah. they're so like new new agents wise or you know even agents they're just so eager to make that commission check that they're not providing value exactly and then they're wondering why they're not getting referrals you know what i mean or it's just like a transactional deal it's like all right let me move on to the next and check people see that they see yeah. right through yeah. you yeah if, if you're not genuine and you're you're just there to make money they see that and and I, that's that's another thing, right? You just want to learn your craft, especially it, it, it's not transactional. Learning their why, as as far as why they're moving, as far as uh, out of state or whatever it is, and using that to uh, their motivation to to get you to where they need to get. Um, and another thing is like social media; it's free, right? Especially on a new agent, like we don't have unlimited funds in regards to advertising and for new agents, just using a social media platform and, and being top of mind and reaching out to people like, uh, 
um, like I have a, an assistant that's becoming a realtor and she got three leads within the last week on just social media, wow. Instagram. Wow. And incredible. Then it, it's just, and, and it's just posting, right? Just showing that she's with me viewing properties and now everybody see oh what is, what exactly is it that you're doing and just that's it that starts a conversation and everybody that's following her start a dialogue they're following you for a reason so just starting that conversation i honestly think that one i don't know if this is a mistake or something i you know maybe it's not a mistake but when i first started like on instagram and like started doing everything i have two separate accounts like I have a personal and I have a business and like my personal account, it's private. It has nothing to do with my like actual business. Profile. You don't want to see yeah. his personal account. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, you want to see personal, right? That's like, why I yeah. mixed it too. Yeah, yeah. That's why like, listen, by no means like I get in front of the camera or anything, but my biggest engagement was me being an idiot dancing on social media. Like people were like, Oh, I didn't know you had that side of you. I'm like, yeah, man. <laughs> like, oh, you, you look so serious. I'm like, nah, man. It's like, but yeah, that was like the biggest, like the most views I ever had, the most engagement. And it was just me dancing sauce. Like, I love dancing. Like, that's what I used to do. Like, when's fun. part two coming out yeah. then? Oh, part two. <laughs> <laughs> the best video that Jose ever posted. I'm not. This had me dying. You. It was. It was. Susie gave you a gift, and it was like the corn toss or cornhole, whatever. Yeah. And then Jose was just like, "Oh, there's these dates on. There's a date on here. I don't know what that is." And then I saw Susie repost it. She's like, "That's our anniversary." <laughs> 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 the way yeah, it yeah, cause I, I, I just, oh. so we're really both bad as far as dates dates we were just talking about this uh, and my daughter she's 13 and my sister-in-law she's like really into dates like when it's her birthday and if I don't know it she gets offended and I'm like oh my god I'm so busy I, don't, I can't remember that so she gave me a gift and me and Susie picked the third of the month. That's my wife's name. The third of the month of September, because we don't know what's the actual date of our anniversary. So we picked the picked third it. Saturday <laughs> of September, and we're going she out to celebrate. <laughs> and, and so when, when she found, and she, the only reason she found out our actual date because we got into a car accident, and oh. she needed like the police report. And she goes, oh, this is our actual day. So we've been celebrating the wrong day. Oh, this, we've been married like 13 years, uh, 15 years, uh, so, something like that. Sorry. No, that's incredible. Uh, I, we I, might I, have to edit that part out. Take it out. <laughs> yeah, I had so many days with my wife because I've been with her like 12, 13 years. And I was like, there's like a, a day where we got engaged, then we got married. Like the only, I'm like, babe, can we just pick one date? Like you just combine them all. Yeah. And we'll just do everything that one day or that one weekend because it's just a lot. I was like... It's just a lot of dates. Like now you're talking about closing cl closing dates. You know, you're talking yeah. about birth dates. Like, listen, let's just one at a time. Let me just, let's pick one day. And then we picked like a random day too. Yeah. It was like, had nothing to do when we got married, but it was just easy for me to remember. Yo, honestly, I feel like relationships like in our business, like you really have to find the right person. Oh, you have. What we do is crazy. <laughs> I'm like, always on my phone. Like, yeah, it's, uh, you really yeah, have yeah. to be with somebody who understands that yep. because like we're on the phone nonstop. Like Sunday night, I was with my girlfriend. I had to take a call at 930 and I told her before I was like, this is an important call. I have to make this totally okay with it. Like you have to be with somebody like that because if you're not and it's like, going to be an issue, it's going to affect your business. Yeah. So you really have to, you have to really find the right person. Like I'm thankful I found the right person. Everyone here clearly has yeah. as well. So got to be thankful yeah, for Yeah, because if you don't, that can affect your business. It's tough. 100%. It, it's like, man, the support system. Man, we went to uh, vacation um, not too long ago. We went to Vegas. Me and my wife, just spontaneous. We just went out there and got she's remarried? on her laptop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got remarried. <laughs> this is our new day, babe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, she was on her laptop. I was on my laptop. I was on my phone. And like, legitimately, we're always working working because you can't just stop right yeah. it's, it's a just, service business exactly yeah. and you know um a buyer sellers especially in her field they, like you're you're doing pre-approvals for different realtors and things like that like it, like time is money people depend on you exactly yeah. so and if, if you don't pick up somebody else will exactly so no i think it's it's true i think my i think that's an important thing to support them with my wife she gets it and it's it's awesome like i'm really thankful to have her like literally like if i'm like if I leave my phone on the counter I step away and someone's calling me like she'll answer it because like 
it may be Lee, it might be someone, yeah, I don't know. So awesome. I'm answering, she might be like, hey, it's Jill's Jill's assistant. So now, oh, like, that's, now, like, <laughs> now I'm like, oh, this guy's busy. So, so I think probably she'd be like, it's Jill's boss. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think it is important because they, you know, it is, like you said, it might affect your business because it's, it's not easy. You're up random hours. People will call you, text yeah. you, email you. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and I think I, I just I just appreciate my wife the fact that she helps me out and looks out. Shout out to her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what's crazy? I wasn't gonna get my license. I was like, no, I don't want to do it. My wife is the one who basically pushed me to do it. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so I owe her a lot of money. <laughs> Also, don't get me wrong. Like, it's always nice to like have somebody who's there, like who also is a hustler too. So yeah. it's just like you know, for me, like I'm like an entrepreneur. I'm, we're on completely different lanes. So she's like pre med, and like she's going down the medical path, super like set everything like that. For me, my future is very uncertain. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna do? I might make so, money this month. Yeah, I might not. I don't, I don't know. But it's it's good to have somebody who also is a hustler. I feel like that's something that every person who's in this industry has in common. Like yeah. a significant other is usually a hustler or, you know, supporting staff, somebody who fits them because yeah. it really has to fit. I don't know if that's non-unique, but just something that like we see, obviously. Yeah. That's no, true. The goals have to be aligned. Yeah. yeah. 100%. Like your goals have to be aligned. And then if you know you're, you're about to achieve that goal or you're going for that goal, then it becomes really good. Yeah. What, what, what's something that you guys would say would that sets you apart? Because just on Long Island, there's like 30,000 agents, right? Mm -hmm. The market is oversaturated with agents. And I think that's why we get a bad rep because a lot of agents, some agents don't know what they're doing. Yeah. You know, like I've talked to agents. I'm like, yo, uh, how'd you pass this <laughs> test? <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm struggling to pass the test. <laughs> <laughs> so like what's something that you would say? that makes you stand out from everybody else? Yeah, I think it's, uh, for me, it's I make it relatable. You know, I think one of the reasons that, well, I always wanted, I always wanted to be in real estate, but I definitely knew I wanted to be in real estate uh, the second time around was, the first time I bought a house, it was like, it was just a bad experience. Like, my, my agent wasn't that good. Um, you can shout them out, we'll bleep it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I didn't know about home inspections, I didn't know about anything. So like, when I first moved in, the first two weeks, like, the house was like falling apart. So I'm like, all right. So I want to make sure that this has happened to people. So when I meet people like, Hey, you know, I tell them the reason I got into real estate is because this is what happened to me, the micro personal experience. So I want to make sure that doesn't happen to you. And yet again, it's like, you're adding value, educating them the process. Like it's not just about me showing you houses, but it's also about here's what we need. Here's what it's involved, right? We have lawyers, inspections, like you do everything, walk them through everything, you educate them and you add value. It's supposed to like, I can get you this for this amount of money, or I can do that for you. But like, if you're, just take a step back. Just have a conversation with them. Like, here's my story. Here's why I do it. This is what we have to do. And here's what we'll do by this time. And I think people like appreciate that. And they see that you actually want to help them. And they're like, all right, I like you. I'm like, I like you too. Listen. <laughs> let's, let's do this. Just sign on this yeah. dotted line. Sign here and I'll love you. you know what, I mean? <laughs> what about you, Jose? Uh, honestly, I just love the process. Like I, I said before, it's just one of those things that I genuinely love being part of the process with a homeowner or a buyer. Like I'm like, and I'm, I'm speaking on, on the buyer's aspect. Like I'm not afraid. And, and and some of my uh, buyers can tell you, I'm not afraid to to tell you. And we've done home inspections, and I've come out of pocket to cover their home inspection because I'm like, this house is not the right one for you. Like, let's walk away. And and it's just like I'm heavily invested in in, in their like process. A homeowner just making that 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 process that like especially last year everybody was leaving out of state and just being a part of that for their family and and getting them to point A to point B. It just like like making a difference in their life. Like a lot of people don't see that. I, I would say um, business side of it, but I, I just. It's just genuinely like I, I just love it like the grind especially also the grind the hustle and not i have clients right now works overnight police officer and texting me at one in the morning two in the morning and i'm up and it's just because i love the, what i do and no, i don't I sleep like oh man you see my social <laughs> social media post it's like one two in the morning and then, you <laughs> sleep who sleeps <laughs> I just I, I like it I, it's just one of the like when you have a passion for it it's like it's not work 
No, and I think it's it also sets an example for kids too because I think I think three out of four of us have kids here, right? <laughs> um, but I think it's um, Who's the other person? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it sets an example for them too. Like they see you working hard and they they, they see it too. And I think it's it's uh, it motivates the kids also. And they see that you know the harder we work, the more fun we have. And it's like they're all on board. You know, every time I leave the house, my daughter's like, "Where are you going? Show a house?" And I'm yeah. like, "Yeah, I am." So it's great to see that the kids are are involved and it's a business that you can build that they can come in and work with you and take over. And it's, it's awesome. Like I would love to a few years for my daughter to work with me. And I think it's, um, and the other, other jobs, courage, you don't even get that chance where you can't like bring your daughter with you and like mm-hmm. show her the business. And here you can bring her, I can bring her and meet, have her meet people network. And it's like just incredible. And yeah. I think she'll, uh, it's just a great opportunity for the kids. Talking about network, you you do a, like an appreciation party for yeah. So I did a, a client appreciation, my first one last year. Um, I want to have it like every year. So basically, it, it's just to show my gratitude to all my my friends, family, um, homeowners, buyers, and even my referral partners. Right, and my network. Um, people like I had realtors there. I had. Uh, mortgage lenders like everybody that genuinely helped me in the in this business to what i've achieved like last year was my my best year and like congrats congrats Congrats. yeah that's awesome so um like that client appreciation it's just a time for them like basically everything um it it was it was really nice It, it definitely was really nice the support system like it just goes to show that they they care for you as much as you care for them. You know what's crazy is that we're all, <clears throat> excuse me, we're all sitting here down having this conversation. <clears throat> but if we went to a listening appointment, be like, "Yo, Jose, who? <laughs> <laughs> that guy? You don't want him, Jose? Yeah. You, yeah. you want to work with? Nah, no way, Jose." <laughs> <laughs> What is the time he's heard that? <laughs> Zach, is that you still around? Nah, <laughs> man. They call me Jose, or my last name is Padro, but they call me Pedro. So they think that's I what have I thought your last name was. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no, that's actually Padro. Padro. <laughs> Jose Pedro. And I realized I'm like, I'm like oh, I messed they up. They think I have like two first names, and I'm like, no. But uh, hey, if it's for a listing, I'm like, call me whatever you want. Yeah. Pedro, Jose, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> like, whatever. That's so yeah. funny, man. Like, what is um. This event that you have coming up too in September, no? It got pushed oh back. yeah, so it got delayed. It was supposed to be March, um, I, I believe twenty fourth. Um, the the main event was supposed to be. So I'm doing a thing, fight for charity. I signed up in September, September October, yeah. Um, and I was introduced to it uh, to Rob Xavier from Wall State. Shout out to Rob. Um, and. I hit one of his employees. She she was badass. Like she was fighting. <laughs> she was the main event. Um, Shannon and and like I saw like it was like over like six seven hundred people in this particular room looking as everybody was fighting and it was a great networking event and it was for a good cause they raised money for their charity different charities of where of what exactly they wanted to raise for like my charity is eat into program um autism because my son is on the spectrum so it's near and dear to me and my wife's uh as far as because they they supported us so much and so i signed up and realistically is to challenge myself i wanted to challenge myself this year because one thing, I'm turning 40, so I've been out of shape. Damn, whole, you're old. Uh, man. <laughs> bro, I'm just joking, I'm just joking. <laughs> Yo, hit him with the bottle. <laughs> Yo, seriously. He, he's turning 40, and he still slices people up on the court. Like, yeah. I guarded Jose so many times. Yo, this man can play. Like, uh, I, I love basketball. That's what I do, like, two or three times a week. But I want, I really wanted to get, like, physically, like, fit. And and basically, at the same time as, like, I'm training, I, I lost, like, 29 pounds since October to now. And by no means I, like, cut my diet. Like, I'm still eating and drinking out there. But it, it's just one of those things that, it, for me, physically, to challenge myself. And 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 I love boxing, but I didn't like it so much three weeks ago. Like I t- <laughs> <laughs> so, What happened, man? Vince, Vince. Man, yeah, three weeks ago, I did my first sparring session. Uh, to this uh, gentleman named Keith Dawson. Thanks, Keith. Um, It was the first time I got punched in the face. (laughs) 
physically, I've never physically. got punched in the face. And I had headgear. Man, this guy rocked me. And I thought he broke my nose. And <laughs> and my booger started coming down. <laughs> my was like coming down my... Man, I saw stars to the point. I'm like, like this guy, he held back. Like, he legitimately held back. And, oh, man. I, I Like... Honestly, I was contemplating. I'm like, what the hell am I doing? I'm <laughs> getting He's sitting on the no stool. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, oh, maybe, maybe not. But honestly, no, it's for a great cause. We hit our, our goal, but we want to exceed it. Um, and it's for a great cause. And the new uh, date is going to be September 15th on a Monday. Hope to awesome. see you guys there. Man. We'll definitely be there, be there to road. support. Yeah, yeah definitely. Uh, where can people reach out to either donate or buy tickets so you can um on my bio there's a link uh my my uh, is that business as usual yes it's misspelled because it was already taken so business with one s um but the link is there <laughs> uh the tickets um are on sale they usually like 150 now they're on sale for like 100 and it's going to be cool there's going to be like six seven hundred people not only real estate related uh it's entrepreneurs from all like i mean there's a fighter there that breeds llamas yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah, we just went to her farm. And, and she's badass. Like, we were, like, doing the speed bag. And, man, I'm not coordinated. And the girls, the ladies next to me, like, and I'm like, hi, hi, let me just step back. And, See, speed, yeah, speed bag is hard. Oh, I, I, yeah. I look, it looks very easy. And I was like, I, everyone does. I could do it. I'm like, this is terrible. Like, my coordination. And there's, like, you just got to get the it. rhythm down. You know exactly. what it is? There's a trick. When you look at the speed bag, the little thing that's holding the bag, you got to look at that, basically. That's what I do when I look at it. And I count one, two. One, you two, box, one, two. right? Yeah. but Because I see you in the Instagram. I'm like, oh, this guy could be no, my I trainer. Too. I was about to beat his ass. <laughs> <laughs> He's capping all the way. <laughs> Yo, honestly, that whole event that we were going to do, before basketball, we were doing boxing. I don't know if we touched base on this on the podcast before. But we were going to do boxing. But we were just like, Kevin's much more skilled than I am in boxing. I was like, let's step into a different realm where we don't have to hurt each other. Because I'm a lover. I'm not a fighter. So I was like, let's step into another realm. And then Kevin started posting videos. I was just like... Yeah, I don't know. He just posted one that. today, and his <laughs> hands are it's fast. And the videos you were posting at, like, the punch bag, whatever, I was like, that's about to be me. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> you know, yo, like, boxing is one of the best workouts. Like, you're just punching the crap out of something, getting all your stress and frustration out. I think health health is well, especially in the business that we're in. It's so stressful. Yeah. Like, I wake up super early to go to the gym because I don't have time to go later on. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, do you guys, I, you're working out. Like, what do you, like, do you work out? Or I know you play ball, too. Like, yeah, I think for me, it's, I, yeah, because I'm just gonna have kids. I, I need to get up early to get my workout done. If I don't get my workout done, I feel like my whole day is just like thrown off. So I'll get up, I'll, um, I, I, I try to do some cardio just to run, just to get, you know, the blood flowing. And then I'll, you know, get the kids ready for school and do everything. But I think it's so important to, you just release some stress out, especially in boxing. I love boxing too because you just literally go, you deal with a lot. You do a lot of people all day, and this is your one chance to kind of just let it out. And in the, and also you're also getting in shape, which is awesome. And I think that for me, and it's it creates important. A, a regimen, a habit, like yeah. uh, like time management wise. Boxing especially. is tough though. Like I boxed before, and the I thought it was so much easier than it actually is. Like I thought that like a three round <laughs> fuck, a three round <laughs> fight was easy. Three like, minutes feel like three hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's the like first three minutes. I literally couldn't breathe. I was just like just punching. And I was just like because I was like I was just like what is going on yeah. right now. I like, did a big mistake. I, I so I went. I go to the training out in Huntington, and the trainer goes, "Okay, you're gonna run around legitimately. Just run around the ring, back and forth, back and forth." Mm -hmm. And I told, I didn't tell him, but I'm like, man, that chicken parm does not sit right. <laughs> I, had, I had chicken parm like literally two hours prior. And I, I didn't tell him. And I'm like running around and running around. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is not good. I had to run out the ring and I puke. And he goes, well, what happened? You ate before? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so every time I'm about to train, he's always telling me, you didn't eat, right? I'm like, no, no, no. Let's go. Come on. But. Yeah, man. It's, it's yeah. brutal. Don't do that fight night. <laughs> not, 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 not. Wait, what are you fighting at weight-wise? Um, So when I started, when I signed up, I was supposed to be heavyweight because I was at 225. Oh, man, those are big dudes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. 225. So they said I need to go under 
what was it like 195 so right now i'm hovering over 193 to 196 but i'm trying to my goal weight is 180 180 180. see i walk around weight like 155 160 but i was fighting at like 135 141 so i was like this yeah i was like skinny my face was like sucked in (laughs) yeah i was super i was like mike skinny over there oh that's awesome (laughs) but yeah, you definitely feel the difference, though. Like oh, yeah, you, you feel the weight. difference. And plus, it's, like, motivating for me because I'm going to be on the ring, right, without a shirt. I don't want my wife being like, oh, which one is your husband, that fat ass over there? <laughs> <laughs> no? That's my referral partner. <laughs> so that's what's motivating me because I'm, like, I'm going to be without a shirt, and I'm like, oh, man. So Are you guys going full off shirt, everything? Yeah, full, and then, like, head, head gear? gear. Yeah, head gear. So I'm like, No tank tops, nothing? I don't know. I didn't see I'm surprised. Like, I didn't see tank tops last year. But then again, I I don't know. I was busy talking. <laughs> working around. But this man, listen, I'm just worried about me and I'm like, all right, I'm gonna be up there and everybody's cause even just announcing the fight, I had like 30, 40 people there. And like everybody wants to see me get knocked out. Like there's a poll Damn. in my family. <laughs> my family, my brother and everything. They're like, Oh, I put first round, second round, third round. Like, oh my god. Wait, do you know who you're fighting yet? No, they don't announce that. I think a month or two pr- uh, months okay. prior to the fight. So now it's just like general training, and then when you find out, then you know who you're yeah, training exactly. for. Gotcha. That's interesting. Are you sparring more often, man? When I used to spar, like, like my, I would have like the the, the gloves marks all on my nose, out, and my really? face. Yeah, it'd be really bad. You see, really like I never, I, like honestly, like I'm thinking about it. I'm like, oh man, I don't want my face. <laughs> a black eye. You see what happened to the last seller who didn't sign? <laughs> so, I was just like, oh, man. That's why, like, my technique has been, like, running around, like, jabbing, running around. And, like, I was like, you need to get in there. And I'm like, nah, man, I gotta show a house in, like, an hour. I'm playing defense. playing defense. Uh, defense it's awesome. like, honestly, it, how long are the rounds? So, it depends. Like, it, so, initially, it's, like, three rounds, one minute. Oh, now, if you're training and you want two minutes, they'll allow you to have two minutes or three minutes. Um, so let's see. Yeah, I think I want to be ready for three minutes. If that's three, three minutes, sure. one minute, one minute rounds, three rounds for one minute, somebody's gonna get knocked out because you don't have just to spar. Play. Like, well, but just here's the thing with, with like amateur fighting, like beginning fighting. Those three rounds, they're coming out swinging. Like, oh, yeah. They're coming and out throwing haymakers and everything. It's just embarrassing, right? Even my daughter, <laughs> that, 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 they're two years old, right? And she's like, I want my friends to be there. But if you get knocked out, we're just going to record it. <laughs> YouTube. Great. World star. Yeah, exactly. Imagine. If, oh, my Which God. Which your dad? <laughs> he boxes tomorrow. He, <laughs> he's sleeping right now. It's a great, it's a great you workout, and, and especially the breathing, the breathing technique. Like I'm that person breathing with my mouthpiece out. And oh like, no, 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 no! Apparently, they said one of the most painful punches you can take is with your mouth open. Oh, and, you feel like your jaw's broken. Yeah, exactly. So I, I gotta really, really like I'm taking this training really serious. But the breathing technique, they said, you need to. Jake Paul Canelo, watch out. We got Jose Pedro <laughs> <laughs> coming for you. <laughs> yo, but that's just, that shows like Jake Paul. Like that fight was a while ago. But yo, this man just started boxing. Like he's not just like he's not a scrub. Like he's no, he he's really definitely knows what yeah. he's doing. Like and it's all about the name. So I, I picked out a name. It's called Sasa Picante. So that's my fighter name. I put a poll up there. I, I was scared because Pretty Nails was going to come out <laughs> on top. But lucky it didn't. But uh, no, Salsa Picante. I'm like, that. that's my fighter's name. Uh, my fighter. <laughs> Third person. I like that name. Uh, yeah. Thank Picante. you. Thank you. There like you go. It. So what are we expecting from you guys in the future? Now that we're uh, we're basically into the new year, uh, what do you guys what do you guys have planned for this year? On top of the boxing event, um, what can we expect from you guys? So this year, um, what I'm focusing on is growth, right? For myself and also uh, my team. I, I really like uh, I'm recruiting and, and and trying to expand my team. Not I, I don't want a big team as of yet. I want quality over quantity. So I 
like my assistant right now, Jessica, she's about to get licensed. Hopefully she has her test in two weeks and she'll pass. She already passed the class exam. And I have two other people that, that I'm bringing over to the team. So that's that's my focus is uh, my team and and trying to get get better each day because we are we we can always work on ourselves. That's awesome. If you want to join the Sasa Picante team, you know who they are. <laughs> <laughs> What's team name? What's team name? Um as of right now, like I'm still throwing ideas out there. I haven't really picked out a team name yet, but I'll think of one. Oh, I'll you're the it. man. I'll think Maybe of one. No, I think for me, it's um, you know, I'm excited to be part of uh, Really to Connect and excited to be part of Kevin's team. So for me personally, it's just trying to be. Wait, we haven't announced that yet. Um, yeah, so it's funny because he was confetti? he was har- <laughs> he was harassing me in my DMs for a very long time, right? Yeah, so so I met Kevin, but too many like six months. Yeah, it was like a six month uh, follow up. Six month follow up. Oh, that's it, awesome! But it's just Damn. it's just that's how it is in sales, and just how you stand out. Because I think most people will give up after the first or second try, and it doesn't work that way. You know, it's uh like even when I when I cold call, right? People are like, I'm not interested. I will always say either it was my wife when I met her. Right? <laughs> <laughs> And then we've been there for 12 that's years. Awesome. That's great. Yeah. People are like, they chuckle and laugh. I'm going to steal that. I like that. And no one's interested in the beginning, but like, it, it's the follow up game, right? And it took me like two years to get a date with my wife. And it, it worked out. But for, for Kevin, I knew it was going to just be the same thing, like the same process. Like, st- just follow up, just like stuff, share stuff, just just try to get in there. And then we finally, it finally worked out. I have the same mindset as him. It's it's quality over quantity. Yeah. And, and, but when I seen him and I stepped back and saw him in action, I was like, ah, oh, yeah, he's, he's, he's oh, good. That's awesome. Yeah. First time I met Gio, I was just like, yo, this man's a shark. Like I just, I mean, yeah. James, I had a good time. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we had a great time. We got to do it again. To my, the block out the, my yo, but there's, that. there's no confetti here. I wish we had confetti today, but, that's, but that's, 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 that's awesome. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. But I'm really excited about that. I thought you should give me a hand for a second. <laughs> I was going to do cheers. But <laughs> cheers, cheers, man. Cheers to all that, man. Yeah, Where people cheers. can reach you? Um, you can reach me at my cell phone, 516-815-6164, or my Facebook, Instagram. You can reach me anytime. Instagram? Uh, business as usual. With um, one S. With one S, guys. Yeah, for me, my cell is 914-320-0157. Facebook, my Instagram is at, at Geo Real Estate 10X. So that's where you can find me. All right, guys. 10, 10X business. You already know. We now. appreciate you uh, you guys coming and we look forward to you, you for having Make us. Make sure, yeah, sure to check out uh, Jose's event and try to make it if you can. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, awesome. that was the latest episode of the Real Estate and Chill Podcast. We will see you next time. Thank you for tuning in to the Real Estate and Chill Podcast with James Tadre and Kevin Iglesias. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, share this with your friends, your enemies, your mother-in-law. No, seriously, this podcast is so fucking good. You might 